Hi everyone. In this lecture, I am going to discuss the pathogenesis of preeclampsia. So, it is a pregnancy specific disorder because once the woman is pregnant, then only she develops preeclampsia, right? And it is also categorized in pregnancy induced hypertension. So, many of the studies said that it is two stage disorder. So, what is two stage? Two stage means uh, in stage one, the abnormalities or the defects begins in the utero placental area. And finally, these abnormalities or the inflammatory response which start from this area is moving toward the systemic circulation of mother and involves the major organs like kidney, liver, heart, CNS. Okay. So, in this video, we will discuss how the first stage disorder begin and from where this disorder develops. Okay. So, let us see as it is the two stage disorder. The first etiopathogenic factor which is responsible for the developing of preeclampsia is the abnormal trophoblast invasion. If you remember, we already talked about the development of placenta. So, just revise the previous point. Suppose uh, here it is the maternal tissue that is the decidua, decidua basalis and uh, which is formed from the endometrium of the uterus and here it is the finger like projections or the functional unit of placenta that is the coronic villi. And let us draw the myometrium of the uterus. So, here it is. Now, what happened in normal pregnancy? First, we talk about the normal pregnancy. So, here it is the spiral arterioles. So, in normal pregnancy, what is happening? In first trimester, some of the trophoblastic cells invade the maternal tissues, right? So, these are called extra villous trophoblasts because they are not taking part in formation of these villous system okay so the trophoblastic cells which are forming the villi system here is the villous trophoblast but some enters in the maternal tissues and are called as the extra villous trophoblastic cells and once these enter they start invading during first trimester they start invading or replacing the endothelial or the muscular lining of the spiral arterioles right this is the very important step so once these endothelial or muscular lining of spiral arterioles are replaced by these trophoblastic cells in first trimester like this what changes you can see here these narrow diameter vessels now changing into the large diameter vessels right so in this first trimester these extra villous trophoblastic cells invade in the spiral arterioles during first trimester and remodel these spiral arterioles okay so this is a very important step so because of this the blood is going up in the intervillous space here and perfusing these tissues okay and in second trimester what happens again the second wave of trophoblastic cells in second trimester again the second wave of trophoblastic cells enter in the endothelial lining and the muscular lining of the spiral arterioles and make this vessels more dilated. So, for the higher perfusion, there is a remodeling of spiral arterioles here in the normal pregnancy during first and second trimester. But, but in preeclampsia, what is happening? The first wave of invasion by these extra villous trophoblasts completed here up till this decidual lining. But what happens? During second trimester, these trophoblastic cells are not 
invading the endothelial as well as the muscular lining of the spiral arterioles. So as these are not invading and they are not remodeling the spiral arterioles, then what happened? The blood vessel remain narrow. So as the blood vessel remain narrow, the less blood will be perfused here. Okay. So as the perfusion is less, then the resistance will be high in these blood vessels. And that finally altered the exchange between the mother and the placental tissues. So what is happening in the preeclampsia by this factor that is the abnormal trophoplastic invasion. These extra villous trophoplastic tissues or the cells are not invading in the spiral arterioles. Right. And once they are not enter in these endothelial as well as the muscular coat of spiral arteriole here, then the vessels remain narrower and that's why they are less perfusing here and the tissues as well as the cells of the placental bed remain hypoxic as well as ischemic okay so that is called the stage one disorder now the another factor is the genetic factor this is a very another important factor because half from the mother and half from paternally derived genes are communicating and they are regulating many of the enzymatic and metabolic activities in a woman. So some of the plasma derived factors are there that alter or that provoke these genes to cause hypertension in a woman. Okay. So this is the another factor uh, because we cannot say that there is one or two genes are that that they are responsible for hypertension but there are some of the genes that stop trophoblastic cell to invade in the spiral arterioles and again that are causing vasospasm so this is the another factor now the another very important factor is the third one is immunological maladaptive tolerance So immunological tolerance is required during pregnancy and how it is possible because the placental area is the privileged site where the maternal as well as the placental derived tissues are interacting with each other right. So there is one molecule which is represented by these trophoblastic cell is the major histocompatibility complex that is the non-classical molecule and it is the human leukocyte antigen G and in the decidua there is the another decidual natural killer cell and this is very important as the function of these are the cytotoxic these are the cytotoxic T cell but here it is very important because it recognizes this molecule and allows the trophoblastic cell to invade and also limit their invasion by these decidual natural killer cell because if it is not there then the immunological response of mother will be increased and that can stop their further invasion but because of these cells this recognize this complex as a self only and allow their invasion along with that during normal pregnancy what is happening there is a T helper one cell helper because it is helping in an immune response of a mother that is it help in adaptive immunity so during pregnancy its role because t1 is a cell mediated response so during pregnancy in a normal its response is decreases and it is shifted toward t2 response because it is antibody mediated response right in normal pregnancy what is happening the response of T1 is shifted toward the T2 and the cell mediated response is now changed into the antibody mediated response. So here in preeclampsia what is happening as the vessels remain narrower they are not perfusing the tissues that much. So that's why at this uteroplacental bed area there is hypoxia, ischemia and the T cell mediated that is the cell mediated response is also increasing and once 
the T1 response increases, now the cytokines are released. And once the cytokines are released, that is the inflammatory response are initiated and the various inflammatory mediator like tumor necrosis factor alpha, interferons as well as interleukins are released now. And because of these inflammatory mediators, what is happening? The oxidative stress is also increasing. So oxidative stress is increasing now. And because of that, how we can say that oxidative stress is increasing? There is more reactive oxygen species as well as the free radicals. And these all causes the formation of lipid peroxides. And because of that, more toxic radicals are formed. And finally, it will cause endothelial dysfunction. So because of the T1 mediated responses increase, the inflammatory mediators activities are also increasing and that will causing the endothelial dysfunction or the endothelial cell activation. Along with that, as the tissues remain hypoxic in this uteroplacental bed area, what happens? Some anti-angiogenic factor. Some anti-angiogenic factors are also releasing in the systemic circulation and these are the soluble FMS like tyrosine kinase 1 and the another one is soluble endoglin. So these are the two factors and what these factor does? They bind to specific pro-angiogenic factor which are responsible for the healthy vessels and uh, such as you can see here the soluble fms like tyrosine kinase 1 binds to the vascular endothelial growth factor and it also binds with the placental growth factor right so although these two are responsible for the normal development of vessels but as these anti angiogenic factors bind with this these are uh, act like a receptor which bind with these two factors and stop their function. In similar way, the soluble endoglin is also act as a receptor for transforming growth factor beta, right? So because of hypoxia, what is happening? More anti-angiogenic factors from the trophoblast are releasing and some of these are the soluble FMS like tyrosine kinase 1 and soluble endoglin and these anti-angiogenic factors bind to pro-angiogenic factors which are responsible for the normal development of vessels but as these are binding to these factor then they are stops their function and also causing alteration in the normal physiology of vessels. So because of less perfused blood in this placental area the T cell mediated response is increasing and that is causing the inflammatory response and damaging the endothelial lining and along with that more anti-angiogenic factors are also releasing from the trophoblast. So what is happening? Once these inflammatory mediators enters in the systemic circulation, they start damaging the endothelial lining of the vessel wall. So although the property of normal vessel is anticoagulant, so the blood is flowing smoothly, but here as the vessels are damaging, there is a dysfunction of endothelium. So this dysfunction causing alteration in vasodilators as well as vasoconstrictors in blood. So one of the vasodilator which is present in the endothelium is nitric oxide which helps in the dilatation of blood vessels and the another is the prostaglandin that is the prostacycline these are the two vasodilators but because of the endothelial dysfunction these are releasing less and more vasoconstrictors are releasing and the vasoconstrictors are thromboxane this is released from the platelet and the another is endothelin and the angiotensin 2 
so in a normal pregnancy angiotensin 2 is break down by the angiotensinase which is liberated from the trophoblast but here as we have seen that the trophoblast is also damaging here because of the hypoxia and it is not uh, uh, that much releasing the angiotensinase and that will cause us the more release of angiotensin 2 as a vasoconstrictor and as the amount of vasoconstrictors are more in comparison to the vasodilators now it is causing the vasospasm and because of this vasospasm the woman may have hypertension so we are seeing because of this narrower vessels the blood is not perfusing that much in this placental area and the tissues are not perfusing well so that is causing the hypoxia and ischemia and the placental debris or the micro particles now entering into the maternal circulation and along with that what is happening the t cell mediated response is initiated more okay and once it is activating more it releases more cytokines in the systemic circulation and that ultimately damages the endothelial lining or causes endothelial cell activation and along with that we also seen that anti angiogenic factors are also releasing that stop forming the normal vessels and because of this dysfunction what is happening there is a imbalance between the vasodilators and the vasoconstrictor and that lead into the vasospasm and because of all this thing the classical triad symptom which the woman is representing is the hypertension because of vasospasm and because of endothelial dysfunction right and the edema once the endothelial lining become damages what is happening the fluid as well as the protein is leaking into the interstitial spaces so women may have edema as well as proteinuria okay so these are the classical triad symptom because of this pathogenesis so here in this video we have seen the stage 1 disorder in which the defects or the abnormality begin in the utero placental bed area because the tissues are not perfusing well so once the inflammatory response begin and it travel along the systemic circulation of the mother then the stage 2 begin in which the major organs are involving so that will see in the another video how the second stage begin and how these inflammatory mediators travel along the systemic circulation and involving the major organs of women thank you